12.05 in the afternoon on this Wednesday afternoon. That means that we always have a date with Helping Seniors of Brevard. And this uh, Wednesday, as we get ready for some cooler weather, and of course for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, let's get today's program underway. Here is the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard and the host of our show, Carrie Fink. Hi, Carrie. Hey, John Harper. How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. It's getting to be Christmas time, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest for today so the three of us can chat a little bit about Christmas uh, weekend holiday plans, uh, because it's going to be interesting. We live in Florida. We think we should have a, uh, you know, one of those. um, I'm looking at the cover of this month's Senior Scene magazine, which I can show you guys here in the studio, and I'll have to try to describe for somebody who is... uh, who is who is listening on the air but it's a nice tropical uh beach setting with a little tiki torch and uh it's all it's all festive but i guess it might be the wrong weekend to be out at the beach if i'm listening to the weather forecast john (laughs) so well it really won't be a good day and i've uh, been on the beach when we've had those uh downright cold days you still get people out there you still get some people surfing and uh um fishing from the uh from the beach what is that called well i call it like the polar bear club is what <laughs> i would call it you know it's got it's kind of like when they uh uh you know those those people from up north i remember talking to a friend of mine from minnesota he said oh we just had our good first cold snap a eh? it's like minus 40 i'm like what is wrong with you guys that's you know how do you even do that and then they think we're nuts for living in florida because it's hot all the time yeah so, uh, but I do want to get into the conversation as we're being sort of festive for a moment before we get into uh, the Helping Seniors radio show. I want to introduce to you our good friend, elder law attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. It's no other than Tyler Runty, who is like, I think, a great expert on trusts and all these different areas. And we're going we're gonna to talk today actually about the top five uh, documents as people are making New Year's plans and things like that. But let's start by saying hello, Tyler. Hello, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's good. It's it's just a pleasure to have he, have you. We're going to come back to the Christmas discussion, but I don't want to get too far into the program without um, celebrating our uh, president and founder, Joe Steckler. Joe, uh, as you know, is the gentleman who created uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard. He started that uh, in 2011, so we're now moving into our 12th year of service with that. And then before that, you know, Joe was a retired uh, uh, Navy captain. He actually commanded submarines early in his career. But uh, when he and his lovely wife, Terry, came to uh, retire, they thought, I guess they thought they were going to retire. They came to Satellite Beach and Joe got uh, started with the Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation. He created those things that uh, the adult daycare centers all throughout the county that to this day uh, are called Joe's Clubs, named after his efforts to get all of that going. And the reason we're celebrating Joe is that he celebrated his 89th birthday yesterday. Yesterday was 89 years old for Joe. And so we posted out a bunch of stuff on the Helping Seniors of Brevard Facebook page. And he goes, he goes, I don't really feel like I'm almost 90. So that should be encouraging for the rest of us, right? <laughs> so, so let's talk a little bit about we are getting ready. It's the holiday season and everybody's festive. And, you know, for, for different people celebrate different holidays and, and celebrate it for different reasons. But this weekend is the Christmas weekend. And so I was asking Tyler before the show, I said, you know, what are your Christmas plans? And I thought it was wonderful because you have kids that are really going to be into it this year. That's right. So I have a four and a six year old and we are going to Ocala. So it's it's going to be cold in Brevard County, but it's going to be even colder in Ocala. Yikes. I heard that it is actually the supposed to be the coldest Christmas since 1983. Wow. So we are looking forward to it, but we might stay bundled up inside. Um, (laughs) I don't know. My kids definitely like being outside, and my parents' church actually does an event where they do uh, snow um, tubing. Uh-huh. and have the snow coming down. So oh, it'll be wow. great to keep the snow, snow. Yeah. Um, but that's going to be a cold one. <laughs> no doubt. But uh, but then as we were talking about, your kids are just at the age that this is like perfect for Christmas because four and six, they're just going to have a ball with it. They certainly do. They And, and it's all the things, you know, gingerbread house making and oh, the elves and, and it's everything there. I, I like the golden age for Christmas, I think. Yeah, it's the fun of Christmas. How about you, John Harper? What are you, what are you, what is on, what's on your agenda for Christmas time? Um, for, 
For this year, just uh, really the traditional type of Christmas and with uh, family and friends coming by and enjoying that, looking forward to that, and uh, also thinking back on some of the uh, wonderful Christmas Eves and Uh Christmas Days that uh, I've enjoyed in the past. You know, I was thinking when you said I'm looking forward to a traditional Christmas Eve, guys, it wasn't that long ago that we couldn't have that with COVID, right? Remember, it's like That's everybody right. stay in your own corner. So, you know, thank God we're back to at least uh, that part of it. And, you know, in our case, we're going to head over and uh, we have a uh, five and a half getting ready to be six month old grandbaby. So this is literally first Christmas. So like we were just sharing, four to six is the perfect age because they're going to be totally into it with a five month old grandbaby. They're jolly, they're happy, but this is really all about the parents buying all. Look what we got the baby <laughs> stuff, you know. <laughs> so, so it'll be it'll be a nice Christmas, and I hope where you're listening too, you're going to have a good and pleasant holiday uh, weekend and and enjoy the season. And one of the things we wanted to do, so again, I wanted to really seriously honor our president and founder Joe Steckler on 89 years, and and really, if I think about it, he is an inspiration to the rest of us. Uh, we in the work of helping seniors of Brevard. Our objective is to do a couple of things. For 12 years now, we've run the county senior information helpline. And here's a statistic that actually kind of blew my mind. Nancy Deerdorf, our operations director, and she's going to write about this actually in the Helping Seniors uh, of Brevard newsletter, the January edition. Talk about we took over 5,000 calls last year from seniors and their families. That is beyond double what happened last year and so much of it has to do with challenges about affordable housing transportation and different things that we get calls about and so the other side of what we try to do is helping seniors besides step in and try to help as best we can when we get those kind of calls from people really seeking uh a, a good direction for whatever challenge that they're facing. Let me give that number in a minute. I'm going to give you a second to grab a pencil and paper so you can take down the Helping Seniors Senior Information Line. But the other half of what we do is we try to get information in the hands of seniors and families so that they can actually work ahead. In other words, we in Florida understand hurricane planning doesn't mean we're we're planning for a hurricane we actually would hope we're planning for the opposite but it does mean that we want to be prepared if they tell us you know a cat four is headed our way what would we do and so with the aging plan which is what Joe Steckler has called this all along uh, that's his idea is like we got to each have our own aging plan what does that mean not because we want something untoward to happen but you know if one spouse gets sick or you know there's something that's going on or a dynamic or you get sick or you know how do you want to work that so it's not a burden to your family and people aren't having to you know they're already worried enough about you if it's you but then you know at least having the peace of mind knowing that there's sort of a plan and a direction and so um that's why we publish uh what we do we publish we do the radio we do the television we publish in senior scene magazine And we call it, we call what Joe started out calling an aging plan. We sort of say, let's get your ducks in a row. And Tyler Runty with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, as we've we've talked about this, and you kind of helped us kick off the year because you talked about trusts and different things like that in some of our uh, seminars and things like that. You know, the thing that I've really learned along this past year is like the corollary to this is don't try this on your own. You need help of somebody that really understands whatever that particular topic that you're looking for help in. That's right. Um, you you don't want to try it at home. You don't want to get something offline. It really takes someone that, you know, works in this field, a professional, to, to make sure it's done right because the consequences can be so great if it isn't done right. Not only expensive, but, you know, your assets might not go how you want them to go when you pass. Um, You might have someone in charge of your estate that you don't want in charge, or even, you know, while you're living, you might have someone making medical decisions for you that you wouldn't really want making them. So it's just so, so, so important that it's done correctly. Yeah. And I think, I think as general folks who are, you know, we're, we're living our lives, we're busy working, we're busy raising families, we're doing all the things we do. And we don't necessarily know all the nuances of these areas. And I remember, uh, for example, when we sat down early this year and we did a TV program on trust, and I remember kind of joking with you, I said, I thought you had to be like rich and famous to have a trust. And you're like, oh, no, if you have a house and a checking account, we at least need to have the conversation. Exactly right. So the best thing to do is, 
um, you don't want to disqualify yourself from really anything. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is to come in, have a consultation. It can be done over the phone if you'd mm -hmm. rather. And so we can just talk about what you have, what your needs are, and how we can help. There's lots of different documents um, out there that you might need and we can direct you and educate you and guide you which ones are appropriate and which ones would be helpful and beneficial to you. So you don't have to have all the answers um, before you call our office. It's really just the first step is calling us and we will walk you through the process. So don't be scared or nervous. We'll, we're going to help you through it. Yeah. And that's actually what we're going to devote today's program about is because as we go through, you know, usually the thing that happens is as soon as we uh, are finished with our Christmas holiday uh, festivities and all that, then immediately we turn to like, let's get ready for the New Year's festivities. And somehow in that causes us to a look back and go like wow I had wanted to get this done I never really got to it so we make our New Year's resolutions and say you know next year I'm going to be better about this and I think a great New Year's resolution is to let's get our ducks in a row and so we're going to start off the year actually again with that you know with that theme and so we said today let's talk about because I, I kind of call them the big five am I saying that right it's like it's like you you talk about and I've heard Amy talk about this a lot uh, the 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 five big documents that you really want to think about because it's what you need as you get older and it will keep life in your family much more peaceful much more organized and much more uh, stress-free if something you know comes in the way so that's right so there's five that we talk about often as um, th that you really need to consider mm -hmm. so there's the big five and um, and those are the ones that we try to educate people on the mm -hmm. most and really can help almost everyone. Okay. So let's, let's, let's just dive right in. <laughs> so <laughs> where, what are where, they? What's where, the five? Where do you want to start? <laughs> so um, we talk about trusts. So mm -hmm. a trust is one of them. Um, a trust is basically a vehicle that holds your assets while you're living um, and directs how they are to be distributed when you pass away. You are typically the trustee while you're living. So... Um, you control and manage your assets while you're living. But the beauty of a trust is that someone else steps in as the trustee when you pass away, does not take any court approval or intervention or anything. Um, that successor trustee just goes ahead and steps right up and is able to manage your um, trust assets and distribute them um, without probate. Yeah, you know, and, and I really want to kind of break this down because I, I have this idea, hopefully this is a good idea, but I mean, I have this idea that oftentimes we're talking to people who uh, our eyes kind of glaze over if the topic gets a little bit too technical. And I remember thinking that you said, let's talk about trust when we did the TV show. And by the way, folks, uh, that TV show and all the other great Helping Seniors television shows, they're always archived. You can find them on our Helping Seniors of Brevard YouTube channel, our Facebook page. You can get them at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. But I remember sitting with you and thinking like, I'm not even sure I understand what a trust is let alone that it would apply to me like a normal person as opposed to somebody that has, oh, I've got properties in 50 states and all this kind of stuff. But you really broke it down. But I, do, I, I don't even want to get ahead of this because like I'm thinking a trust is a place that you put property in. So like I'm thinking like if, if, if usually we have a house, it's titled in our name or maybe together with our spouse's name or, you know, something like that. And you're saying like part of the planning is that that instead of it being in your name, it's now going to be in the name of the trust. And I don't want to get ahead of this because I want to explain why that's beneficial to you as a homeowner or to, I guess you might put your bank in. Why? What the, Besides the benefit of what happens at end of life, are there other benefits to a trust? Sure. So, so you're right. So you would retitle or deed your property into the name of your trust uh -huh. or retitle your bank accounts into the name of your trust. And during your life, that is helpful because should you become incapacitated, but mm -hmm. you're still living, th that successor trustee, the person you have named to manage it, um, if you become incapacitated or pass away, is able to manage it while you are still living, but incapacitated. So there's certainly benefits while you're living, as well as you know when you've passed away. I think one of the biggest misconceptions in estate planning in general, maybe the biggest, is that you have to have a lot of money or assets to um, benefit from a trust. And that's just not the case. I mean, you could have, if you want to avoid probate in Florida, 
a trust is is one of the only ways. So it's a great tool for that. And probate's expensive and it's time consuming. Um, there are reasons why probate might be a good idea, but most people, um, you know, prefer to avoid it if possible. And a trust is a great way to do that. Yeah, because I, I've heard you talk about it on many different levels, right? It's like, number one, um, the reason it's beneficial is that the, the the real challenge with probate is a it can be expensive but b it also takes a lot of time for everything to move am i saying that right right absolutely so it takes the court some time to um to appoint who is in charge of of your estate so your personal representative you have to get court orders for um your homestead you have to get court orders for lots of different you know, matters. And that just takes time. The courts are very, very busy. And it takes, it can take a long time to get those orders and, and allow any movement on behalf of your estate. So basically, until those orders have come from the court, everything's just on hold. And then on top of that, while you're living, because I've heard this horror story, if I've heard it once from literally every elder law attorney that I've ever spoken with, I've heard it probably a dozen times, that so often you guys have the heartbreaking position you know, mom or dad had a stroke, they're in a hospital, they can't sign papers, it just happened like bam, like that. And then you have to explain to the family that because the paperwork isn't in place or was done incorrectly or something like that, that literally the only option forward now to get bills paid or do other things is through a guardianship, which is a very expensive court supervised time consuming kind of process right which kind of um leads into you know two other documents that are mm -hmm. really important but a power of attorney and a living well health care surrogate can avoid the guardianship process okay so those two documents are huge while you're living if you do not have those you could find yourself in a guardianship situation um, we call the the power of attorney and the health care surrogate the least restrictive means mm -hmm. and if you have those then you have people that can act on your behalf in legal financial and medical situations if you don't have those documents and you lose capacity or like you said um, you know have a injury or or a car accident whatever the case may be if you're unable to do things for yourself um, and you don't have those least restrictive means then you could find yourself in guardianship and it's it's expensive but I think even the what's harder on people the guardian mm -hmm. um, is how much court interaction there is on every little move that you want to make you have to get court approval you have to petition the court um, it's just a it's a tough process yeah, it sounds expensive too, right? Because each time you're having to call, oh. I assume, for the attorney's help. And obviously, you right. know, a, a, you know, attorneys aren't cheap. I mean, they're well-trained and they're experts at what they do. But because of that, they don't come cheap, right? Right. And, yeah. the, and you do have to, you know, you need the help of an attorney. And, you know, if you want to sell something, buy something, basically anything you want to do on behalf of mm -hmm. what is called the ward, um, you have to get court approval. Okay. So, so far we've touched on trust and a little bit about that it's not just for rich people, but it's actually a vehicle that helps you protect uh, what you've got in a way that's going to help you, you know, once you move on to the, to, to, uh, once you move on, you know, so that things go the direction you want it planned out for uh, your, your family, your loved ones, but then also it gives you some help and some protections even while you're living. Uh, and it makes sense because it's one of those pre-planning things. Then we've talked about, uh, now we've introduced power of attorney as number two and health care surrogate. Did I say that right? It's number three. Right. And, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, just so people are clear, the, the power of attorney is someone that would act for you in legal and financial situations. The health care surrogate is someone that would act for you in medical situations. So just, uh, to clear up that those are two separate documents mm -hmm. and each serve their own purpose. Right. Because if you show up at the hospital, somebody's now been to the emergency room and you're wanting to find out, or they're saying, well, we think mom needs this or dad needs that or uncle needs that. You know, you have to like be legally in line to be able to make decisions if they can't. And that's, am I saying that that's what the power, that's what the healthcare surrogate allows. Absolutely. And uh, we, I will tell you that we have many, many, many people that call our office and they say, you know, my mom and dad went to, or mom or dad went to the hospital and I'm trying to use my power of attorney and they won't accept it. And we have to give that, you know, tough, you know, information that, well, that's because 
you don't have a healthcare surrogate. You don't have the medical piece. You have the, the financial piece, but you're at a hospital. You're not at a bank. Yeah, they're looking about medical decisions, not about can we get mom's checking account or exactly. something like that. But let me, I just thought about this while you were saying this. I want to ask if this is, if this is a valid point. Because I know anecdotally, like if you go in there and they know you're the son of mom or dad, then the doctors will kind of talk to you without even having um, you know, this is because I I saw that in in our own life. OK, but then I got to thinking, what if it's stepmom or stepdad? I mean, you don't really have any legal position with them or do you? I mean, that's why you would need this health care surrogate. Right. And legally speaking, you are supposed to have that document. Wow. So will doctors talk to you? You know, it kind of plays out in the real world sometimes where a doctor will talk to you uh-huh. if you're the one that brought the, you know, loved one into the hospital or you're the next of kin. So sometimes they will do that. Uh-huh. Um, it doesn't mean that they have to. Wow. And you just don't want to, you know, be the one that they refuse to talk to because you don't have the health care surrogate. Yeah, at the world's most stressful time, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, right. so this is another case where getting your ducks in a row and planning ahead makes sense. And we're going to come back and we're going to spend a lot of time in the second half of the show talking about power of attorney because I've been around uh, you guys enough to have heard um, that your power of attorney is like pages and pages long because particularly um, – This is like a core document and what you guys have explained over and over that here in Florida, the document is maybe a little expanded or more complicated than it might be from another state if you moved in. So I really want us to get into that in the second half of the show. We're talking with elder law attorney Tyler Runty with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. And we're talking about the five documents you want to put into your New Year's resolutions and maybe update them if you already have them. So with that, we'll join you on the second half of Helping Seniors Radio Show. Thanks for joining us right here on 90.3 FM WEJF. Baby, it's bad out there. No and I think, Carrie Fink, think that's what uh, people will be uh, talking about and <laughs> singing about on Christmas Eve day, Christmas Eve night, and Christmas day. Baby, it's going to be cold out there. Yeah, no doubt. We were we were talking about that uh, actually before the show and during the break. It's like with that kind of weather, we you know, it's like if you can't go to uh, the north for the winter, let's just bring the north <laughs> here and have winter here, you know. Now, you're from the uh, originally from the Atlanta, Georgia area. That's right. right. So, I, you know, I always explain to people that, you know, we're kids from Atlanta, Georgia, who basically got to Florida with 10 years in Manhattan. And so we got really used to uh, Manhattan winters. And I was making the joke before the show, you know, if they, if they talked about 40 degrees weather in you know like february in in manhattan you'd be like oh spring is right around the corner <laughs> put the convertible top down yeah. yeah and here in florida when it gets down anywhere near 60 degrees we're all like building igloos and on lookout for polar bears i mean it's just that's uh, that's very true i remember in uh, the detroit metro area sure when uh, you'd get the first sign of spring on the horizon you would always uh, know that spring was right around the corner when all of the for sale by owner houses and the signs would come down and people would say, yeah, you know, I think I'll stick it out here for another year. <laughs> well, it's great. And so I'm sure we'll, we'll be just fine here in Florida. We'll, we'll, we'll weather the weather and, um, uh, it's all good. So uh, welcome back, actually, to the second half of the Helping Seniors radio program right here on 90.3 FM WEJF. It's our lunchtime gathering every Wednesday, and we're being especially festive because uh, with the Christmas holiday around the corner and then the New Year's holiday right after that. And that's why we thought, what a great idea that we um, ask an expert in this, uh, elder law attorney, Tyler Runty with Law Office of Amy B. Van Fossen to come in and talk to us because we're always making New Year's resolutions and what we started the program out was talking about the five documents that we really, really want to make sure we have in place if we're going to do our aging plan or as like we talk about it, getting your ducks in a row. Uh, together and then as we keep talking about our corollary is don't try this on your own let's get expert help so uh, welcome back Tyler thank you so much it's always great to be here Carrie thank you and we were talking about uh, in the first half of the show we 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 really start we talked pretty much in depth on a couple of these we're going to get into power of attorney but we talked about trust as a vehicle that really is an important thing to help you um, navigate 
kind of uh, protecting your property and making sure it passes along in the way that you would want to have it done. I remember uh, Amy Van Fossen herself, uh, who, is the, who is the lead attorney at Amy Van Fossen's law office, saying something like, yeah, if you don't have a plan, the government has a plan. It just may not be the plan that you, you had in mind. Exactly. That is so true. Right. They're, they have a plan. There is a plan, whether, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Whether it works for you, <laughs> right. that's debatable. And that always leads into that second, that, that joke everybody does about, well, hi, I'm here from the government. I'm here to help you. And then we all snicker because we're like, yeah, it may be the plan, but it may not be the right plan. So this is another reason why getting stuff together makes sense. So we talked about trust. We talked about the health care surrogate which allows uh, somebody that you trust to make decisions about your health care if you're unable to talk about it did I say that basically correct that's right okay did, yep. and then we got into this power of attorney thing which is the document that allows someone to access and do business transactions banking or different things that you authorize them to do with you know uh, with your with your I guess I'd say with your blessing but we started to talk about why this has become such a big topic. I remember um, from various uh, programs that we've done together and talked about that in Florida, putting together the power of attorney isn't just like, fine, you know, so-and-so can do, do all my banking business. It has to be very specific, and there's a lot of rules. And when people move in from other states, they're not necessarily aware that all those things exist here in Florida. Right. So about 10 years ago, the... Florida statutes changed a lot regarding the power of attorney. And more times than not, if you have a power of attorney from another state and you move Mm -hmm. to Florida, it's going to have to be redone. Okay. Um, Just because ours is very specific, we have specific lines that have to be initialed that allow the agent to have certain powers. Mm -hmm. So if those special lines are not initialed, then your agent can't do those things. A lot of those deal with public benefits planning, so Medicaid planning. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think because Florida, maybe the public policy behind it is, you know, Florida has so many elders that our power of attorney is kind of elder law, elder specific. Um, We do have a lot of people that apply and are um, in need of Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the power of attorney document lends itself to that to Medicaid planning, especially ours at our office, because we do, you know, elder law in general. So we do do public benefits planning at our office. So we um, want everything to work cohesively together. So with our power of attorney, we set you up in a great place for Medicaid planning. And I've understood, like, particularly in Florida, I think, am I saying this right, that if you don't specifically give somebody a power, it doesn't, it doesn't work in Florida. Like, and because I've heard you guys talk about stories where somebody was trying to needed to access funds in a certain account because of medical bills or something for the loved one, and then because that that wasn't specifically stated, then they can't do that. Is right. That I mean, that could be the case. Um, you know, the power of attorney has. If you pulled one offline, it's mm-hmm. going to be very very basic. Um, I think that our power of attorney just because we are constantly updating it and tweaking it to account for any sort of roadblocks we have ever come across um we pride ourselves on on that and it's it's a very strong document but you're right if you print something offline or if you know you you have a power of attorney that's old or from another state you your agent likely wouldn't be able to go and do what you're saying you know access a bank account or pay bills or whatever because the necessary um either florida statutes aren't in there or those lines aren't initialed you're you could really be hung up there yeah so getting that power of attorney that's document number three Let's keep going as we're on this great document. (laughs) So um, another one is the pre-need guardian. So a pre-need guardian is a document where you name who you would want to be your guardian if you had to go through the guardianship process. So earlier we talked about, you know, you want to avoid that. Guardianship isn't a fun thing. But if you do find yourself there, you name who you want to be your guardian in that pre-need guardian Mm -hmm. document. Otherwise the court is going to decide for you. Um, and, and usually there's, you know, there's a process that they go through with, um, a panel of people Mm -hmm. and, um, it's who's the best fit, but the best fit in the court size might be a professional guardian and you may, that may not be what you actually want. So it's just good to have that document in place. So your wishes are carried out. Okay. 
So that would be document number four. Right. And then the final one would be a will. Uh -huh. So we talked about a trust and avoiding probate um, and how a trust does list your beneficiary. So who mm -hmm. would inherit from you? But if you don't have a trust, you, you would need a will. Um, not to get too much in the weeds with it, but... If you have a trust, you are also going to have a will. It is a certain type of will. It's called a pour over will. Uh -huh. They work hand in hand. Okay. But let's say you don't have a trust at all. You still need a simple last will and testament. You uh -huh. need a will that says where your assets are to go when you pass away. Uh -huh. The court looks at the will during the probate process. So uh -huh. you're still might you're still going to probably find yourself in probate, especially if you have own a piece of property uh -huh. in your name alone. But you you still need um, a document that says who's going to be your personal representative, who's going to be in charge right. of your estate in that probate process, and also who is to inherit from you. Wow. So again, I'm just going to recap. We're talking with elder law attorney Tyler Runty with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. You guys actually, as a law firm, were voted like best of the best in the Florida Today. We were. Awards. We, we were. Very exciting time. Yes. Yeah. So so not only are you guys, um, you know, and I think Amy said you guys are now almost 20 years of service in the community as well. So you, you know this Florida law stuff. <laughs> that's right. And I, I like to think we do also because we hit so many different areas of elder law. You uh -huh. know, we're doing estate planning, we're doing probate, some guardianship, public benefits, case management. So it's not like we um, help in one area and then kind of pass mm -hmm. to someone else. Uh, we keep we keep a lot of our clients in house and, and are able to help them in that whole aging plan. Like we talk about right. with helping seniors, um, we're able to help them in lots of different ways. Yeah. So I think that also broadens your knowledge base when you do so many different areas. And, you know, even if I'm not the one that knows everything, um, I know the person to go to in my, in our office. You have the resources to be able to do exactly. That. You know, I was thinking about that cause I was talking with Rachel McLean, who is your director of case management and, and we were doing a Helping Seniors television program not so long ago, and I remember asking her, is this common among uh, elder law firms? And she said, no, it's really not. And I said, well, how did you guys, how did this happen then? Or why, 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 why is it not more common? And she was telling a story. She said Amy had um, some clients that she was very concerned about that weren't going to be able to get the right care. They didn't have people around or things like that. And she literally said, this is important. If I'm going to really take care of our clients, I want to be sure that they're getting taken care of on every level. And she said, that's why uh, we started the case management side, because it's so important that somebody who has expertise can be in there and helping, you know, in the, uh, on that level too. So I think that's an interesting part that really speaks to this don't try it on your own stuff. And I really wanted to kind of like take the time that we have left to kind of spin that around as we've talked about these five documents. So let me see if I, let me see if I can say these, okay? We talked about a trust, right? And that's the document that allows you to put your property in it so that theoretically that property doesn't have to go through probate. Correct. Yeah, right. so yep. I'm one you're, for one. One for one, you're doing okay. awesome. Number two, we talked about we talked about the health care surrogate. That's the one that allows me to make decisions for the person that named me as the health care surrogate. Like they're in a hospital and the doctor says we gotta do this. Right? That's right. And and real quick before we move um from that document, mm -hmm. um, just wanna let listeners know that within that document is a living will. So that's the piece that, you know, you're saying whether or not you want to be kept on life support or be kept okay. alive artificially if certain criteria is present or exists, Good. which is a huge piece for a lot of people. Right. That's a tough um, decision to make. And it's something I think that's very personal, but that is part of the healthcare surrogate document and, and really important to lots of people. Good point. All right. And so, uh, Moving along, the third the third document we talked about, which was very important, is that power of attorney and making sure that that's appropriate for us in Florida, right? Correct. Yep. That that lets somebody make a decision for us about like financial or other business matters or whatever specifically we allow them to do in that. Right. Okay. So then number four, we talked about pre need guardianship. So if if I was to lose capacity, then the person that I would want to make decisions for me is already like established in that case, right? Right. You have chosen who you want it to be. Exactly. Okay. And then and then and then see if we can go for five for five here. <laughs> so so then so then the 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 fifth thing we talked about was actually just what we are always used to seeing on movies, you know, it's time for the reading of the will and all that, right? Exactly. Which I think is the one that we get the most calls about, right. client, you know, potential clients will call and say, I need a will. 
Right. Because we don't know to ask for anything else, really. Exactly. And and I think a lot of times people, there there's the thought out there that the will covers all of those things we discussed, all five documents. Uh-huh. So within a will is all five of those, and that's just not the case. Right. But hey, it's a great first step. Call and tell us you need a will. and <laughs> we'll, right. we'll take it from there. Right. So so with that in mind, and I, I want to really stress this, we're talking again with uh, Tyler Runty, elder law attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fawcett. There's lots of TV programs uh, and radio shows, because we archive everything. If we did it, it's there. <laughs> You'll find it on helpingseniorsbrevard.org. There's the articles that you guys have contributed into the Helping Seniors uh, newsletter that we publish every month in Senior Scene Magazine. All of that information is there uh, at Helping Seniors of Brevard. The audio, uh, like the radio, we also podcast these, by the way. So if you do podcasts and you want to find us on iTunes, Helping Seniors is there. If you find us on, hey, Alexa, I want to hear Helping Seniors Radio, you'll find us there. But we try to get this information in the hands of people. And one of the things that I wanted to uh, spend a couple of minutes talking about is this whole thing about don't try this on your own. Because a lot of times as uh, experts in the elder law area, people come to you Maybe, you know, on a couple of different scenarios, maybe they bought a form at an office supply store or these days they probably responded to an ad they saw on TV says, oh, you don't have to fuss with an attorney. Just get your own paperwork. We'll lead you through the process. And then you guys get the call when that paperwork doesn't work. <laughs> right. And I think that it just in today's world, it's becoming so much more digital. Lots uh-huh. of people are doing lots of different things online and just that thought that, you know, it's easier if you just can just print something offline or you can just quickly do it yourself. It's cheaper. But that might be the case with lots of things, but it's not estate planning. You don't want to do your own. You do not want to do your own estate planning documents. There's just too many pitfalls. Yeah, yeah well, and I think the, 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 the thing that I've really come to understand in talking with you about this is that the problem with it is you think you did it well until the moment you need it. And then the moment you need that document to perform in a certain way is the absolute wrong time to find out it won't because you it's not like you can do a do-over, right? <laughs> right, right. You don't get, a lot of times you don't get a second chance because you might be hospitalized or you might have lost capacity or you might have been injured. Whatever the case may be, you um, don't have the ability to sign something else. And that's the last place when you want to be finding out that your online document isn't going to work for you yeah i mean it's like you know that's the most stressful times that you know i'm thinking as you we talk about these different documents it seems like they're coming to play when things are at maximum stress anyway right because yes. something something has happened and now everybody's trying to react to that and now on top of that you have a question mark is this document going to do what i need it to do and then when it doesn't now your stress level is like through the roof right so a lot of times people are scrambling in general during that time right. it's a stressful stressful high pressure situation and then when documents don't work you're just you know thrown over because it's it's your your hands are tied and there's nothing that really can be done so you just you don't want to find yourself in that situation if you prepare ahead of time and make sure it's done correctly then you don't have to worry about that and it really it does give people such a sigh of relief I can't yeah. tell you how many times we have clients that leave our office and just say oh my goodness I'm gonna sleep better tonight than I've slept yeah. in years yeah. um, it's just that feeling of comfort that okay I hope nothing happens it's like the hurricane plan right um, you know I hope nothing happens but if it does I'm prepared I'm ready, yeah. I'm ready for yeah, it you know and and there's not only the this the the uh, challenges that can come up with kind of what I call do-it-yourself stuff but we have a couple of other areas that I think are important important to talk about as we're talking about making sure these documents are right you know because because as we're saying this for our new year's resolution it may be we need to get these documents done maybe we've never done it maybe we put it off let's make that a new year's resolution for 2023 but there could be another part to this that should be a new year's resolution maybe i had these done years ago by a very good elder law attorney you know so i feel like my documents are just jam up and jelly tight it's not going to be a problem but if they haven't been reviewed, A, there could be some changes in the law, B, there could be some changes in your family, or C, maybe because you had these done in another state and you're now living in Florida, they may not function exactly the way you had in mind. Right. All, all of those things. That's You perfectly said, Carrie. I think that 
the new year is a perfect time to get out your estate planning documents if you have them and just take a look through them. You All of those things, such as moving from a different state, changes in family mm-hmm. dynamics, maybe there was birth of children or death of loved ones, um, and just passage of time. If it's been a lot of years since your documents have been reviewed, mm-hmm. you, you want to have them looked at. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you know everything's up to date and the new year's a perfect time to do that yeah no i think so so we've talked a little bit about this uh let's just say somebody is interested now i know you guys are really generous with your time in the community you take time out of your busy schedule to come join us on the helping seniors radio program you make time for the tv you guys uh contribute articles there's a great article actually in the december uh senior scene magazine by one of your fellow attorneys at the law office of amy b van fossen uh katie jackson stoltz did one losing a loved one what's next it's kind of like uh you know steps like you know the unthinkable has happened but we still have to, life still has to go on and now you got to deal with all these things afterwards and that's what you guys are really uh kind of known for but you're also very generous in the community because you spend the time to do a lot of seminars to get people uh, up to speed on the generalities of some of these areas we just had a few minutes to just kind of like touch on them but how if somebody's interested in those seminars i guess i wanted to ask like if they w- have questions they want to find out about seminars how do they reach the office and how does all that work right so our seminars are a great tool mm-hmm. to get information we do seminars out of the office often mm-hmm. around you know brevard county mm-hmm. we also have seminars at, at our office estate mm-hmm. planning public benefits um we have lots of different seminars that you can come they're free mm-hmm. free seminars you just call our office um the number is 321-345-5945 you can also find us online at www.amybvanfossen.com but you just you can call or go online and sign up for those seminars a lot of times it's a great first step Mm -hmm. because you're learning just kind of the very basics and when you do come to a free seminar you get a free consultation um, and then we can you know dig a little deeper after the seminar and really get into how how we can help you most that seems like a really good idea because what it's really doing is helping us uh, be more efficient uh, with with attorney time because now we've had some understanding of the topic we're going to ask you about and then that leads you to be able to be much more specific in helping us like do whatever it is we think we're trying to accomplish right because it's all about education yeah. we're we're trying to educate as much as possible so the seminars are right. are great well no it's good so let's give that number one more time sure three two one three four five five nine four five and and the website was www.amybvanfossen.com. That's Tyler Runty, elder law attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. And I'm also, uh, I promised to give, and I said get a pencil, so it's been a few minutes. Hopefully you got a pencil. I'm going to give you the Helping Seniors Info line. That's the, uh, the number that everybody calls us on uh, to get help for seniors. Sometimes it's themselves. Sometimes it's their concern for their parents or other loved ones. Sometimes it's a concerned neighbor, but you can reach us at 321-473-7770. And we often get calls after the radio shows. People say, I didn't get to the, I didn't get to get Tyler's phone number down for the law office. Can you help me with that? And the answer is yes. Nancy is there to help with that. 321-473-7770. So as we uh, move into the closing moments of the radio show, I wanted to uh, just give you a couple of dates to consider. So we're all going sailing on the, uh, second annual helping seniors foundation cruise that's happening actually january 6th january 8th uh and it looks like we're just now able to announce the fall sailing which is going to happen october 12th three night cruise or october 15th 2023 seven night cruise or you package them together and be there with us for a full 10 night cruise and so you're going to be hearing about that the other date you want to go ahead and get onto your calendar is the seventh annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle. That's our big fundraiser. We'll start up with that probably in February, but I can tell you where the end point is because you're going to get this on your calendar. It's Saturday night, October 7th, 2023. We're all going to gather back together at Mark Pylock's amazing American Muscle Car Museum, and we're going to be pulling yet another winner. So you're going to be hearing a lot about that coming up. So uh, thank you again, Tyler, for joining us today. I hope you have a really good Christmas. 
Thank you, Carrie. You too. I hope everyone has a very, very Merry Christmas. And you too, John Harper. And uh, on behalf of Joe Steckler, Nancy Deerdorf, our entire Helping Seniors family, uh, thank you for a good year for uh, Helping Seniors. We are so looking forward to expanding our service and taking good care of seniors as we move forward together in 2023. So we'll see you next week on Helping Seniors Radio.